Hello, welcome to the Citrus Garden. If you're new here, my name is Christina. If you're not new here, hi, welcome back. It's great to see you. This is a reading for Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising, or if you have a significant Leo placements and are needing a message, there may be one in here for you. Um, so it is, it is Sun, Moon, Rising. It doesn't matter where you have Leo in your chart, but I'm getting a very strong north node and south node energy for you. So maybe you have Leo as a north or south node or just that energy in general is coming through very strongly. Um, so you may want to go watch a video for the sign of whatever your north or south node is. There may be additional messages in there for you. Um, I'm <laughs> There's so much energy coming through your reading today, Leo, um, because so there's a lot of like planetary energy coming through like the north and south node right now the north and south node are actually in a retrograde in aries and libra and aries is coming through as a very strong um uh beneficial energy for you leo um because it's it's fire as well and there's a big theme of fire coming through um which i will get into um, so the North node is important for you. I'm also getting sort of very peripherally, like, I feel like this is not your energy, but you're being affected by it of the Neptune and Pisces, um, that's happening right now. There was a Pisces reading that I did a while ago that I will link for you because it is kind of coming through with this energy for you, Leo, of, um, I feel like that's there's like an external energy that's affecting you in that way. So I'm going to link it for you. There may be a message in there for you, may resonate for you at this time. And finally, most importantly, the Mars energy is coming through really strongly because Mars just moved into Leo as I'm filming this. So if you're finding this at a later date, my messages are timeless. I'm just putting it in context of um, what's happening right now. Uh, so Mars is in Leo. It just moved into Leo, your sign. And in in December, like the end of December, it's going or sometime in December, I can't remember exactly the date. It's going into retrograde into Leo and then we'll be moving back into Cancer and then forward again sometime in in February. So <laughs> between now and February feels kind of like... Um, the next couple of months, I feel like this Mars energy is actually helping you uh, with something that is coming through as fire, like inspiration. It feels kind of like a new inspiration or a new perhaps creative project in some way. Um, that's how it's coming through from, for you, Leo. <sighs> because I feel, I feel kind of like this energy of... Um, you're in an environment right now that feels like winter. That's how it's coming through to me. So it's it's not literal, right? It's just like there's some aspect of your life that feels kind of like winter. Whatever that symbolizes to you. Because uh, I was seeing the winter card in this deck. It may also be past. There, it, there's, a, there's also a significant past energy as well. Where maybe something from the past felt like winter. Um... But within the winter, I'm just going to put it presently for you, though. Yeah, I feel I, so I feel like you're in this period of winter right now. And in the next couple of months, it might be that energy for you in some aspect of your life, right? That's how it's coming through. Not in all aspects, just in like one particular aspect, it feels like. Um, but in the winter, of course, you feel the full effects of whatever this like flame or spark is because it, it feels small at the moment. It feels like an ace of wands, like a spark, a flame, a very small fire that is providing warmth for you in this time period of winter, whatever that is. But at the moment, it's small. And I feel like that's, that's beneficial for you at this time. Like this Mars energy is actually going to help you to grow this fire, whatever it is. Um, it feels very strongly like a creative project or some sort of some sort, or like a creative, like 
venture or, or something to do with fire, inspiration, passion, creativity. Um, because you are the fixed fire sign. So I'm, I'm getting very strongly this energy of a fireplace for you, Leo. Um, it brings comfort and warmth when everything around is sort of colder. Um, and it's, it's coming through like this because in the summertime, for example, when your life is in a summer phase, um, you don't need fire, right? Because it's warm already. You don't need fire. And perhaps there's something about this winter energy that is really helping you with whatever this is because, um, you don't need fire in the summertime. You would actually, like, whatever this, like, it feels like a project. I'm just going to phrase it like that that this project would not have been born if not for the winter, right? So it's kind of coming through as being like, um, in the summertime, if your life was in summer right now, you wouldn't have seen this at all. You would have overlooked it. You would have um, not noticed it. It wouldn't have stood out to you because there wasn't enough contrast between you or whatever this fire thing is um, and the environment. So the winter is helping you. This Mars energy is also helping you. Um, I keep getting this energy of contrast, right? Like cold and hot, ice and fire. And a part of what was coming through with that energy as well, with the fire, I was getting very strongly something like um, resetting your fire, Leo. This, this, whatever this is, feels kind of like a reset, a reset. Um, and as a metaphor, like this, this might not resonate for everybody, but it is coming through as an example. Like, f for example, if you um, drink alcohol, right? If you drink it a lot, there's this sort of like... Um, your body becomes sensitized to it or desensitized, I should say. Your body becomes desensitized to it. So it's like you need to consume more of it to maintain the same level of drunkenness, for example. Um, but we're relating that to fire where it's like maybe there was something in your life where you needed more of something in order to maintain some level of fire. So this energy is coming through as being like a reset, like the winter is coming through as a reset. So it's like you need, like if you go cold turkey, for example, on some sort of substance abuse, and then if you reintroduce it, you need less of it, right? That's how it's coming through. Anyways, I don't know why the, I feel like the, the alcohol energy is coming through because it, how it was coming through metaphorically is that alcohol, of course, is like a, is like a, uh, it has a effect of depress depression, metaphoric, like, I don't know how to describe it, biologically, right? It depresses, it reduces um, cognitive function, I guess. It's a, anyways, that's how it's feeling. But alcohol also has this effect of like creating warmth with, within our bodies, right? It feels warm even though it's a liquid, which is interesting because there's something about like, I feel like this is past for you, Leo, where, um, so maybe you are going cold turkey from some sort of substance. It doesn't have to be alcohol. That's just coming through as a metaphor. There's this energy of coldness from some area in your life that is actually helping you to discover a more natural fire is how it's coming through. It's resetting your fire so that you need less of it, right? Because it's kind of feeling like um, whatever change you're going through right now feels kind of like uh, the difference between switching from like an electrical thermostat into a fireplace. So it feels more natural. It feels more natural to you, Leo. Um, There, there's this energy of like comfort or coziness or like warmth or um, belonging 
that I feel like is being ignited in you through some sort of like creative project or something like that. And I feel like the Mars energy is helping with that because Mars also <laughs> has been transiting through Cancer, which represents the home. Anyways, there's a lot of energy between like your fourth and fifth house, which is your home, your sense of security, belonging, and your fifth house, which is passion, creativity, um, and five also represents change. Anyway, so those are all the downloads that are going in for you, Leo. I'm going to pull cards to see what else wants to come through. Resetting your fire. You will need less than what you needed before is how it's coming through. <laughs> the new pearl. The Aries reading from yesterday may be helpful for you. Um, just because I feel like there's a very strong Aries energy that's like benefiting you at this time. The new pearl, because this came out in yesterday's reading as well. Um, because you are fixed fire, right? I feel like there's something about your fire that's going through like a reset or a restart in some way, like you're restarting something, um, or there's a new beginning in something, which, which Aries energy would be really beneficial to that because Aries is cardinal fire. It's a lot of like beginning energy. So I feel like the Aries reading from yesterday may have a message in there for you or just in general, Aries energy is helping you at this time. Of course, with Mars as well. Um, so this card talks about a new beginning. It's, it's a promise energy and uh, that whatever this energy is for you, because it does feel kind of like a project in some way. I'm just going to phrase it like that, even if it's not that for you exactly. Some sort of like new creative inspiration or something. It will take time to grow, right? Because the pearl grows with, with time, um, with perseverance. But at the same time, it's like it you don't really need to do much, right? It just kind of builds naturally and on its own. There, there's something like that for you where it's like this, whatever this energy is, it will build naturally and on its own. All you have to do is receive because it's something with like um, inspiration, especially where like um, well, hmm. Because I do think inspiration is something where, like, um, I'm hearing something like inspiration is born out of boredom, right? Like, you have to be bored in order to be inspired by something. You have to be cold in order to light a flame, right? It's kind of coming through like that. Um, interesting. So, the, but this, this is coming through, like, it comes through with this energy of the ocean as your ally, Maybe a long period of sort of like this ice cold water energy is inspiring you to light a flame of some sort. Okay, no. It, okay, that's the that's gonna be the main focus, but I'm gonna use the animals in a second. Hmm. There, there may be, especially with the Mars energy, um, there may be periods of frustration with this because, especially with this, right? Grit and perseverance are necessary. Um, but I feel like that energy is going to help you get through some sort of period of difficulty is how it's coming through. Like the frustration is helping you. The, um, because it, it's almost like it increases your, your motivation or something like that, your drive. 
It's actually helping you, which is interesting. This Mars energy is really helping you. The unicorn, very interesting. That's a that's the third eye. Oh, wow, okay. And then you have the whale, the snake, and the frog, which is all of this water again, right? There's there's this really interesting energy here of... Um, I So I actually feel like that winter energy might actually be something from the past for you. Yeah, you have the bat, which talks about closure, right? The ending of a cycle. This So the last Scorpio reading as well might have um, a, re uh, a message for you. Because this, this energy, because the whale I see is Scorpio energy. The snake is coming through with protection of your potential. And the frog is coming through as being like emerging from the water. I feel like maybe Leo for you in the past... This feels like something where, like, maybe there was something in the past that was in sort of um, an icy, frozen, kind of cold winter energy. But it's starting to thaw, is how it's coming through. Because with the frog, if you something about frogs, which I think is so interesting, is that you can freeze a frog. If you, like, frogs can survive being frozen. Um, and then when you thaw them, when it becomes warm enough, they just continue on as normal, right? They they can survive being frozen. There's something about like some some aspect in your life. I feel like this is a past energy. Um, went through this period of being frozen, whatever that represents to you, but it's now thawing. Something about um, because the snake here is coming through as protection. And I'm seeing this structure as well as being protection. Protection of a potential. Because it's it's kind of... So, so something that had potential. Like a spark, right? So it's... I feel like whatever this is for you, it never fully got a chance to develop. Is how it's coming through. But it was being protected. This spark of potential was being protected. But because maybe the conditions weren't right for it or something like that, but it's now thawing. Something about it is thawing here with the uh, the frog. I feel <laughs> hmm. I feel like there's um, this unicorn energy. I'm gonna read that one. That represents the third eye. Reconnecting to higher wisdom or divinity. It's hard to, it's difficult to see, hear, or think of a unicorn without immediately questioning if it's real. Did they ever exist? Perhaps long, long ago. The mind answers maybe, or it could be, or no way. This very contemplation explains our relationship with divinity and encapsulates our wavering belief in the unicorn. We wonder what divinity is. We wonder where our intuition comes from and if we can really trust it. We think about a higher power and our mind hesitates between yes, no, and maybe. Is it male or female? Does it have a name? Is it just a feeling? The unicorn appears and wakes us up to curiosity about the higher self and the divine. It is a card of questioning, exploring, and contemplating the inexplicable. The mind's eye knows there is something beyond our day-to-day -day lives, a deeper dimension to our experiences. The mind's eye reaches and reaches and reaches out to grasp something more. You are the unicorn and you have begun your quest for the answers. Hmm. So it says the ancient yogis believed it to be responsible for our intellect, intuition, and deepest wisdom. Some say our two eyes see the past and present, while the third eye peers into the future. I I feel like there's this there's an interesting energy here of past, present, and future for you, Leo. 
I feel like something from the past is thawing, right? Something that was in a winter phase is waking up again. Um, it was protected is kind of how it's coming through. Maybe you were protecting it in some way um, or that it was being protected by like your guides, your higher self was protecting this aspect of you. I feel like you are getting a glimpse of the future. It, I don't know. It may feel like, so maybe that you're, maybe you're getting a glimpse of the future, Leo. Um, but you may not be believing it, right? There may be this sort of energy of, um, is this real? <laughs> that came out in the Scorpio reading as well. Um, hmm. Or this energy of, is this possible? That maybe you're getting a vision of something, but it maybe feels a bit too far off or far-fetched perhaps, or like, um, How would I describe that? Like, it's like, maybe right now you're not seeing how this vision could possibly happen is how it's feeling. Like there aren't enough, um, maybe you're feeling like it would take a lot more than you have at the moment, right? Like either resources or connections or something like that. Like it would take a lot of resources that you don't have. It would take a lot of connections that you don't, you haven't met yet or like it's because it kind of feels like it has to do with a creative project that did not reach its full potential is how it's coming through and so it was put on ice but now it's like maybe that vision is starting to be awakened in you in some way or reignited it's being reset That with, with that energy of something being reset, right? Because I feel like it's something where like um, when you reset it, it it returns it back to like the base uh, function, right? Like like you don't need a lot to get started is how it's coming through. Or maybe maybe there's something about like past energies are being cleared out in some way. Like, cause I, I'm thinking of like a fireplace, right? If you had like a fire that was burning there, but now it's all turned to ash. So it's like, you got to clean all, clean all of that out. It's feeling like a fresh start and a reset. So this could have to do with like, if there were past disappointments, if there were like past energies that ended up sort of sour or negative or, um, difficult it's like cleaning all of that out especially with the frog this comes through with being sort of like a healing energy to me it also talks about vulnerability like emotional vulnerability and openness I love this frog card so much um there's so much like positive energy here though but Leo it feels kind of like because all of these are coming through as sort of watery. Even the snake today is coming through a bit watery, even though that's an earth, um, an earth element. Um, I feel like you need to reconnect with your fire. Why am I not seeing fire cards here though? Uh, hmm. I'm getting kind of something about like, um, 
maybe you associate fire with like fire needs something to burn right and I feel like there's something about like maybe you don't have resources for the fire to burn right like it's kind of like you need wood in order for fire as an example um I feel like though there's something about like that might be a uh limitation that maybe you need to clear through your system in some way because it's like a spiritual fire if we talk about it that way this a spiritual energy for you Leo you don't need anything to burn it's like whatever this fire energy is it's like within you I don't know how to describe it besides that it's like you don't need anything other than what you are you are warmth, you are fire. It could also be talking about like your heart energy as well. Okay, interesting. Land, animal, star. And then the third eye is lit up there as well. So the bear comes through very strongly with this card, of course, but I'm gonna read it because this one um, doesn't necessarily specify a specific animal, but the third eye is coming through very strongly. So as I'm reading this description, there may be an animal that comes through for you just in your mind's eye. So pay attention to that and, um, perhaps look it up on your own time to see if there's any like symbols. Perhaps you're, even if you have like a dream of an animal, that might be, um, a significant, spirit guide for you at this time. Okay. So shamans have long revered sacred animal totems for their strength, their power, their wisdom, and their magic. All people have their own sacred animal totems that govern their lives. The gifts, behaviors, and characteristics of these animals guide you and bless your path. Notice the animals that appear in your life and that visit your dreams. When you close your eyes and ask your animal totems to show themselves to you, which are the first to show up? Are there any animals you feel an affinity for or that pop into your mind as you read these words? These are your animal totems. Trust in the messages and in the medicine they hold for you. They are your allies. They hold the wisdom that will guide you on your journey here. So animals, there's an, a significant animal symbol that's coming in for you, Leo. It doesn't have to be a bear. It could be any one of these animal symbols. Um, pay attention to color as well. That would also probably bring a bit more insight into it, into whatever this animal represents to you. The color is significant. Interesting. That's a very interesting energy. I feel like this, this animal spirit guide is, um, leading you with sort of like your third eye, like through symbols and things like that. So you may start seeing this animal just like as a sign or a synchronicity or in your dreams as well. What does that animal represent to you? Because uh, like you can Google it, but I do think that there's um, also just a more personal significance that that animal might have for you especially if it has anything to do with color yeah interesting this talks about um your toolkit of what you have already overcome is going to help you overcome some sort of um challenge that may be ahead for you so it says land, mountain, star. The compilation of the energies that have carried you through the initiations you have already endured, the lessons you've learned and the obstacles you've overcome form a powerful and mighty toolkit that will support you through future challenges. When you take inventory of all the things you've made it through, you will realize that the courage, just the strength and the resourcefulness that supported you through these difficult times are still with you now. These tools you've gathered from the difficulties of the past serve as armor that protects you and as tools that will allow you to navigate the unknown that lies before you now. 
When you choose, remember to call forth the tools and the gifts that carried you through those hardships and those experiences as you face the challenges that are heading your way. Instead of reacting in fear and confusion, then you will triumph over yet another soul initiation like the leader that you are. I, again, your past experiences are going to help you in this. I feel like there's something of a past experience that I feel like you associate with winter, Leo. Um, or, or like coldness, like ice, um, like something that was frozen in your life. And maybe there was, um, some sort of warmth or inspiration that helped you get through that difficult time. That's how it's feeling to me. Like an experience of your past where you found inspiration or joy or warmth or happiness or creativity through a period of your life where it was where it was cold there was there was hardship there was difficulty there was a lack of resources or something like that because i i'm seeing this as being like all of those experiences are going to help you i actually feel like there's something about like getting a bit of an upgrade to whatever those tools are because it's kind of like like say you're starting a new hobby just for an example where it's like um let's say you start a new hobby and uh you get sort of like hand-me-down kind of like tools just to get you started right like maybe you're not working with the best resources or like the best materials or um, you're just starting so it's like you have the basics of something but now it's but that becomes part of your toolkit right it's like you you can you you know how to use all of these tools you know how to like work with specific materials and things like that it kind of feels like you're getting an upgrade in that area so it's like maybe your original set of tools for example were things that were passed down to you from others or like things that were that other people were getting rid of but it's and so it's like you had no choice in what materials you were choosing or the tools you were using or something like that but now it feels almost like you get a choice in like the upgrades that you get like say you're buying like as an example right like I've been knitting um the knitting needles I got from a relative who is no longer using them but it's like if I wanted to, I could go out and buy a new set of needles that would be like things that I chose, things that work for me the best after having used what was available to me. It's kind of coming through like that for you, Leo, like something about like um, getting a new set of something that will work really well for you is actually how it's coming through because there's all of this potential here for for your reading today there's a lot of potential that i feel like was protected for some reason I, something had to end first before um this potential could be um tapped into it's like some something in your life had to end first before this potential was like released because it's kind of coming through as being like money being on hold as an example like money was being held on to it was frozen you couldn't access it until something went through like a, a process of ending or something like that hmm <laughs> yeah, interesting. This is that past energy. Fire, wildfire, sun. This is the past energy. Like, the something that went through an ending. Because this is one of the more difficult cards in this deck. Um, it talks about, like, a burned bridge. Like, anger. Um, I Do I have to read it? I'm going I'm to just skim it. I don't like reading this one. <laughs> Because this is a fire energy, right? So it's like um, a situation in the past 
where there was too much fire, too much fire. The fires were overtaking whatever it was. Um, perhaps there was a burned bridge. Perhaps there was anger and frustration. That's what this card represents, which is interesting because it's like all of your energy is coming through with water. I feel like whatever, this is a past energy for sure. Um, there was a situation in the past where fire became uncontrollable in a way. I, it could be your fire, like, again, with that energy of, like, it needed to burn. Like, it kind of comes through with this, like, with the wildfire, right? Like, um... <sighs> like destructive. It's destructive fire. That's what this energy is. There was a situation in your life from the past that felt like destructive fire. And so the universe or the circumstances around this situation put it on ice. It froze it is how it's coming through. No more fire, opposite of fire, ice. But now that ice is thawing. So it's kind of like there's something about like, um, because I'm seeing this snake today as a seed. And with, with the frog sort of like defrosting. <laughs> the frog defrosting and coming back to life. Um, there's something about like not all was lost. Not all was lost in whatever this destructive energy was. Some Something was preserved and protected. And it's coming back to life, which is interesting. And it's that's the reset energy because it's almost like perhaps whatever this fire was, the, the destructive energy removed anything that was like extraneous or not necessary because it's kind of coming through as being like um, you, you don't need as much as you thought you did. Leo, which is an interesting energy because it's like you, it's like resetting your base level to less than what you were operating at is how it's coming through. Like, so it could be that there was like something that was inefficient. Like imagine just like a heater that just uses so, 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 so much energy. It's like, it's almost wasteful. That's how it's coming through. Maybe there was something in your life where it was wasteful or you were like wasting resources or resources were being wasted, like not used efficiently. And it's like this energy is coming through as being like, you don't need that much. And it's a reset of that. I'm going to pull one more card because th there was something positive that came from this um, difficult energy. That's how it's coming through. And that, that positive thing was preserved. Okay, no. They want just one more card for the, the unicorn. Okay. <laughs> fire, ancestor, fire. Moon. Yeah. Because you, you do have lots of fire cards here. Well, you have two earth and two fire. I love this card because it's so it's so grand and to come out under the unicorn as well it feels very like significant um hmm the ancestors are calling you the ancient elders speak in whispers through signs and symbols and dreams in nature their call can be as inconspicuous as a gentle breeze blowing across your shoulder or as a song lyric that comes on when you start your car. All the ancestors ask of you is that you pay attention, heed their call, and respond. It is time to connect with your ancestors. Build a bridge that allows their presence to be felt and acknowledged. Create an altar for those in your bloodline who walked this earth before you. Make an offering, say a prayer, sing a song. The ancestors have wisdom to share with you. Your connection will create more ease in your life and more trust in your soul. There's a, there's a significant um, intuitive energy coming through with this, right? Like it's intuition, but through fire, which is really interesting. Because I'm kind of getting this energy of like, um, this fire has been passed down to you. 
whatever it is, because it, it's kind of coming through with this energy of um, Prometheus. Prometheus, who is a Greek titan, that story of um, how he stole fire from Hephaestus and gave it to humans, right? There's something about like uh, with the unicorn, like divinity, that kind of energy, divinity giving you fire, Leo. Sorry, I'm getting such a strange image. Um, there's a, like, in the Transformers movie. <laughs> um, the tra one of the Transformers movie, I don't know. That series is, is so ridiculous, but I love kind of movies that are ridiculous like that. Um, where the Transformers, of course, they're like these giant robot, uh, robot aliens from a different world who are these kind of protector energies, but... Um, there's this one movie, I don't remember which one, where they're looking for, like, the spark of life. It's, like, the, the spark that allows life to be created. Um, and it was hidden on Earth. There's something here about, like, the potential, the spark of life that I feel like was hidden somewhere within you, perhaps, Leo, but that, and you're being... Like, I feel like there's something about your intuition that's really strong at this time that's, like, leading you towards it. So you may not be necessarily seeing all of the clues or all of the story or all of the... Like, you may not have all of the vision, but your intuition is leading you step by step closer to whatever this spark is or whatever this vision is, or whatever this creation is, it's like you're being led to it, step by step. Okay, I'm gonna pull one more card for the middle. It's like, it's like the spark of divinity that allows you to create life. Okay, yeah. Very interesting. Okay, so you have three sky cards. Sky, wind, moon. Sky, snow, earth. Sky, lightning, moon. I'm not going to read these ones because they're, they're all kind of tough. This one talks about... Um, It's like, it's like, I feel like, I feel like the universe, your guides, whatever language you want to put there is leading you straight to something of like a spark. But I feel like this card is the one that is wanting to come through very strongly for you with the animal cards. Again, it's talking about like your spark, Leo, a spark of divinity within you. That had, that I feel like has, like, the potential of it was protected is how it's coming through for whatever reason. I'm going to read this description. It's one thing to love animals and to scratch them behind their ears or to tell a chihuahua in someone's purse that you like its sweater vest. It is quite another thing to truly commune with animals. When was the last time you ran alongside a horse, feeling the joy and freedom it feels sprinting across the land? When was the last time you rolled around with a dog, not just looming over it while patting it, patting it on its head, but humbled yourself by bringing yourself to its level and playing with it the way that dogs actually like to play? When was the last time you sang along with the birds and harmonized with their melodies? The wisdom of the animals are profound and their messages run deep. Avail yourself to the medicine they carry through communion. Allow the animals to teach you through their ways and through their language. They are our guides here. Walk well with them. Very interesting that it's coming through with the language of guides, right? Animals as your guides here because animals are all around us here on earth. I feel like a lot of, um, in spiritual communities, we talk about sort of like guides and like 
spirits that are sort of ethereal. The animals are our guides on earth. So there's this energy of connecting to earth, which was also coming through in the Aries reading from yesterday of like, there's something that you are meant to do on earth, Leo, is how it's coming through. Something about the earth has this potential or this spark that you are being asked to like nurture or guard or um, grow, right? To like feed the, the spark of whatever this is that you're creating on earth specifically. It feels very much like the focus is on earth especially with this, right? It's like this energy from the divine coming down to earth. That's how it's looking to me. Okay, I'm going to pull, I know, okay, no, I'm just going to end it there. I was going to pull an animal card, but we're Okay, I'm gonna pull one card and I can always just cut this out if I change my mind, but I'm gonna pull one more card from this deck because the animals are coming through very strongly and I feel like there's like one more message coming through. Yeah. Action leads to success. The six dragons, which is very interesting. This is the first card in this deck. Um, action leads to success. Dragon is another energy that is similar to the unicorn. But anyways, the six dragons reference the I Ching's first hexagram, the creative. In Chinese tradition, dragon creates great fortune for those who encounter him. Dragon is of service to those in need. His acts are benevolent and not self-serving. Dragon assists human on their journey towards ascension. The presence of six dragons, one of the most promising cards in the deck, foretells a successful outcome if you take the inspiration running through you and turn it into action. The collective power of the six dragons holds the medicine of the first six cards in the deck. Meditate upon these cards as they are a roadmap for the journey towards success. All humans hold dragon power. It is the energy within that we direct outwardly to create what we desire. It can be considered a masculine energy, one of the initiator, the doer, the spirit of action. Commit to overcoming any roadblocks, and even if fear rains down on you, do it anyway. The medicine of this card is a sign to fully submit to what you want to manifest and then initiate. Know, however, that self-centered desires will have limited success. Work diligently and do not expect an immediate reward. Dragon does not focus on fantasies of future possibilities, but acts in the now. Discipline persistence is required. Do the work, but do not focus on how the outcome will manifest. Do the work and life will guide you. Six Dragons Medicine shares that what your heart deeply desires you can achieve, but you're advised to be wise in your creation. Any man can create heaven or hell on this earth. It is your choice as to which. The six dragons ask you to make sure your wishes are in alignment for what is best for you and for all the creatures of the earth. If you truly come from your heart and take dedicated action towards your goal, the six dragons will assist you and lead you to supreme success. Their medicine calls for you to come from your heart and to take action now. Abundance and prosperity follow. Yeah, Leo, there's this energy of like, um, I don't think you know fully what the outcome of this divine spark is going to lead to but it's like follow or like follow the steps little by little you will be led to the right actions the right path and all of that but it's like be present don't try and look too far into the future because i feel like you you're not going to see all of it until it's like fully built is how it's coming through but you are going to be shown the right actions that you need to take in order to accomplish whatever this goal is. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. If that resonated with you, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Thank you so much for sharing your energy with me and I hope you have a great day. Bye.